everybody, and welcome to the continuation of exercise six. We are looking at page 73 of the workbook here. Let's take a minute to read this. So it's asking us, what relationships do you notice between the orders of the elements in G and that of their corresponding cosets in G mod H? And they'd like us to state and prove a conjecture that reflects this relationship. Okay, well, to answer the first part of that, we need to scroll back and see if we notice any relationships. Okay, probably the easiest thing to do would be to look at this table. And what we're looking for relationships between are the numbers in the in the second column here and the third column. Now, it would be really great if those numbers were all the same, but they're not. We're getting different numbers in the second column and in the third column. But do you notice any relationship between those numbers? Okay, we've got 1 and 1, we've got 4 and 12, 2 and 6, and 4 and 12 again. And the thing I notice there is that the numbers that you see over here all appear to be divisors of the numbers that are over here. Okay, one goes into one, four goes into 12, two goes into six, and so on down the line. Okay, so if I had to make a conjecture here, I'd probably say that it looks like the order of the coset is always a divisor of the order of the element that generates it. Okay, that turns out to be a true statement. Let's see if we can kind of formulate that in words and then prove it. All right, so here comes our conjecture. Okay, if we let H be any normal subgroup of G where G is finite, okay, and that kind of describes the situation that we were in in part A, then we claim that the order of the coset AH in the factor group G mod H must divide the order of the element A in the original group G. Okay, that's the relationship that we were noticing in the table that we made in part A. Okay, let's see if we can prove that. All right, so here's the first thing that we might notice. Okay, we, we assume that we're in a finite group, and so that means that Whatever this element a and g is, it's got to have a finite order, okay? There's got to be a finite positive integer that we can raise it to that's going to give us the identity back. So let's start by making that observation. Okay, since g is finite, a must have finite order. Okay, say order of A is equal to N. We're just giving its order a name and calling it N. Okay, well, if that's true, that means that if we raise A to the nth power, we're going to get the identity. Okay, but if that's the case, we can kind of do a corresponding calculation with cosets. Okay, what if we took the coset generated by A and raised it to the nth power? Okay, well, by definition, that's going to be the element a to the n times h. And we just made the observation that a to the n is equal to e, the identity element. And e times h, that's just the coset h, which is the identity in our factor group, g mod h. Okay, so what does that mean? What does that calculation tell us here? Okay, well, you might look at this and say, oh, we took the coset AH and raised it to the nth power and we got the identity. That must mean that the order of the coset is N. Got to be a little bit careful there though. Okay, it doesn't for sure mean that the order is N, but if you think back to theorems from chapter four, it does tell us that the order of that coset is a divisor of N. Okay, I'm going to, the next sentence I write, mention what result we're using to come to that conclusion. Okay, so let's see if we can put that into, into a nice statement here. Okay, so because H is the identity element, in our factor group G mod H, we apply corollary two to theorem 4.1 
And kind of in mid-sentence here, I'm going to remind you of what that corollary says. It just says that if you take a group element, raise it to the kth power, and get e, it tells us that the order of a divides k. Okay, so continuing with the sentence, let's read it from the beginning again. So because H is the identity element in G mod H, we apply corollary 2 to theorem 4.1 to the factor group G mod H. Okay, to conclude that the order of this coset AH must divide N. divides n. Okay, and just a reminder that n was the order of a. Okay, so if you look back at where we, where we started with our statement here, we've proven what we wanted to prove. Okay, we started with an element of order n, and we demonstrated that the coset generated by that element, whatever its order is, it has to be a divisor of n.